Hi everyone, this video explain about attenuation measurement in the microwave. So this is the another type of measurement in the microwave uh, bin setups where the attenuation is going to be measured. What do you mean by attenuation? Attenuation is nothing but degradation in the electromagnetic signal. So as we are studying in the electromagnetic signals or in microwaves, definitely we should say that the uh, degradation in the amount of uh, electromagnetic signals power. So attenuation uh, generally when a signal is being propagated in a waveguide, suppose one waveguide is there, when signal is being propagated in this waveguide, that particular signal is having the propagation constant gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta. Generally, the propagation constant gamma can be expressed as alpha plus j beta. That means the propagation of the signal is completely dependent on two parameters. One is attenuation constant, another one is phase constant. So this one is propagation constant. Propagation constant, whereas alpha is attenuation constant and beta is phase constant phase constant so in the alpha terminology that is alpha is nothing but attenuation constant so now we are going to calculate what is the amount of attenuation generally occurs in this microwave communications so beta is nothing but it's a again separate study where we can measure the phase phase shift okay beta is nothing but it is the phase constant if phase is not changed between the input and output that is okay if it is changed we need to calculate what is the amount of phase shift occurs generally ideally this attenuation constant alpha should be zero ideally the attenuation constant alpha should be zero but practically this is not zero we need to say what is the amount of or how to determine the attenuation of this device okay so there are two types of attenuation measurements there are two types of attenuation measurement There are two types of attenuation measurement. First one, power ratio method. Power ratio method. And second one is RF substitution method. RF substitution method. So these are the two important methods used to determine what is the amount of attenuation that a waveguide is having inside. Okay. So let us see one by one power ratio method. Okay. So the first case is power ratio method. Here one more thing, the operation of all these microwave measurements is going to be explained only with the help of bench setup. Okay. Power ratio method. See all these uh, parameters, power, VSWR, frequency, wave, uh, wavelength, uh, attenuation, all these parameters, whatever you are calculating in this particular microwave measurements topic, all these parameters you can calculate in the, practically you can calculate in this microwave laboratory which you are having in your colleges. Okay. This type of bench setup would also be there. Now, in the power ratio method, there actually involves two measurements we need to calculate. One is, one is without placing, without placing the attenuator, what is the amount of power? With placing the attenuator, what is the amount of power? Later, if we difference, if we take the difference between those two, then we can get what is the amount of power attenuation given by that particular device which is under test okay so let us see in the first step we don't have any other component other than this other than the microwave 
test bench com microwave bench components see we have a microwave source variable attenuator we can say it is a variable attenuator frequency meter output is given to slotted line carriage this is slotted section carriage has again two ports one is connected to the termination the upper part of this slotted section is connected to crystal detector thermal thermistor mount and power meter crystal detector thermistor mount and power detector these three are normally cascaded components which are connected normally in the complete bench setup okay so this is the actually bench setup now when the input is given microwave bench setup is completely when it is switched on what happens the power we are going to measure some power we are calling it as p1 we are calling it as p1 okay so now we are calculating the power without introducing any new device in the complete transmission line remember this see i will write here p1 is the power measured p1 is the power measured when there is no when there is no uh, we can say attenuator when there is no attenuator or any device any new device other than these bench components okay so we can call it as we can call it as input power we can call it as input power that is p1 okay now what we need to do we need to place the device which is under test okay for which you are going to calculate the attenuation see here just where we are going to insert that device we are going to insert that device here okay without switching off the entire device just disconnect the frequency and slotted section carriage at that particular junction now you are going to insert the attenuator or a device which is under whose attenuation is going to be measured see device whose attenuation is to be measured that has been inserted between the frequency meter and the slotted section carriage. So this is the step 2 in power ratio method. Previously we have seen step 1 where there is no device. Now see it shows some power. It shows some power P2. Okay. Now what do you mean by P2? P2 is the power obtained obtained after the insertion of after the insertion of device under test device under test okay so now pt is the power obtained after the insertion of the device under test now what we need to do we need to take the difference between these two okay previous p1 and this p2 if you take the difference between these two then we can calculate what is the amount of attenuation offered by this device which is under test okay so by taking the difference by taking the difference by taking the difference like p1 minus p2 is going to be the attenuation is going to be attenuation offered by the attenuation offered by the device which is under test which is under test okay this is the this is one type of way of the measurement of attenuation which is known as a power ratio method why it is power ratio method because attenuation alpha we can write it as 10 log base 10 p input power by p output power this is the way how you are going to take in terms of decibels okay normally if we remove these uh, logarithm then we will get all these in terms of watts then p1 minus p2 is the answer okay p1 minus p2 if we apply log to this one what happens 
log a minus log a minus log b it is log a by b it is log a by b so that's why it is a p ratio power ratio see uh, this is the input power by output power ratio that is the reason why it is known as power ratio method power ratio method now coming to the second type of method which is an rf substitution method second type of method which is rf substitution method okay so now let us see what do you mean by rf substitution method so rf stands for radio frequency rf stands for radio frequency here also we are going to operate the entire bin setup by passing the electromagnetic signal now let us see what is the step uh, one of this step one of this uh, which method it is rf substitution method rf substitution method see here step 2 of the power ratio method now it is equal to step 1 of the rf substitution method where you first you are going to calculate the power or attenuation offered by the device see first by uh, connect a device which is under test needs to be placed in between the frequency meter and the slotted section carriage and apply the input and take the output power okay so take it as p1 now what we are doing we are first calculating what is the amount of power coming by placing the device which is under test okay so later what we will do later we are connecting a variable precision attenuator in place of that device under test in place of that device under test now we are connecting a variable attenuator variable precision attenuator what we will do variable attenuator is having a knob here variable attenuator is having a knob here rotate the knob slowly rotate the knob slowly until you get the output power p2 which is equal to p1 okay because this is only the tuning uh, device we have in the entire bench setup so this tuning has to be done until that power is equal to the previous cases power previous cases power so previous case power is nothing but this one p1 p1 when the device under test is there and now we are getting the power p2 for the same power for the same power p1 should be equal to p2 now what is the amount of reading shown by this variable attenuator that is the attenuation offered by the previous case okay so here whenever you are rotating this knob what happens because of that power slowly varies okay because of that power slowly varies so if you find this power p2 is equal to the previous case power p1 then we can say stop at that particular point and note down the reading what we have at this variable attenuator that is the uh, attenuation offered by this variable attenuator precision attenuator so these are the two ways we are having to measure the power one is the power ratio method another one is the rf substitution method thank you